Now, the Al-Qaeda target, the original Al-Qaeda target, is, of course, no longer in Afghanistan. It's in Syria. But this time, it's working with the Americans. There was a flicker of Al-Qaeda, you'll recall, the U.S. Defense Secretary said some six months ago, maybe nine months ago, in Syria. That flicker has become a flame. It's quite clear from the modus operandi of the uh, fighters that are uh, combating the Syrian regime. It's quite clear from their rhetoric, it's quite clear from the chatter on their websites and so on, that just about every jihadist of the Al-Qaeda ilk is now taking the road to Damascus and not to convert to democracy, one presumes. No, they're coming in because it's a, a Shia regime. The, the regime of uh, Bashar al-Assad is Alawite, which is a group partly from the Shia religion. And uh, these people are fanatically anti-Shia. They think that they are complete uh, infidels, basically, and we're seeing the same kind of killing. They want to continue doing that they did in Iraq five or six years ago when, uh, when that was the target. These people didn't read Frankenstein to the end. Because once you've created the monster, of course, because it's a monster, it by definition is no longer under your control. And the monster they created to fight the Red Army in Afghanistan became the authors of the disaster, the massacre on 9-11. Is there no sense of trepidation in Washington amongst policymakers in the State Department and so on? about the new monster I, I that they're making? Is. I think there is, which is why people like James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, did go before a congressional committee and become really the first top official in the West to say Al-Qaeda is moving to Syria. Up to then, it had been a secret that nobody dared mention because everybody's saying these people are unarmed freedom fighters, you know, against this vicious regime in Damascus and so on. And when the evidence began to emerge that Al-Qaeda was there, nobody wanted to say anything about it and Clapper was the first to say that and I think he's worried but uh, the point is as so often the United States has a divided administration there are different voices some more hawkish than others some more neocon than others and uh, I think you get people like Hillary Clinton who are very keen on toppling uh, President Assad because they think he's a tyrant and so on and they feel he's lost his usefulness to them in the Middle East and then you've got these people in the national intelligence who are a little bit more worried and so on and, uh, and then you've got Qatar and Saudi Arabia, the big allies of the United States who are pushing really hard and the US doesn't want to get into an argument with them. And so it's, it's leading from behind, as they did in Libya, but basically supporting it and supplying some, in, not only information, but information gathering equipment, satellite communications and all the rest of it across the border uh, from Turkey, obviously a NATO state, uh, helping, the, helping the, 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 the militants. And the New York Times this week seemed to indicate that all of that's going to be stepped up. Uh, the US spokesman quoted memorably, I think, we're going for a controlled demolition of the Assad regime, uh, quoted in the New York Times. But of course, controlled demolitions can go wrong. Uh, and I'm wondering if in London, for example, Haig, who's never off the airwaves, uh, uh, threatening Syria with somebody else's army uh, in the way that Mussolini used to do. Um, is uh, in the foreign policy establishment here no worries of a reprise of the Afghan experience? Well, I think there is, is some concern, uh, but uh, you know, they don't have the ultimate decision making power. You know, it's obviously Washington that decides and Britain goes along with whatever Washington does. But I mean, I think it, the real hypocrisy of it is that they support the Annan plan, they say, which calls for a ceasefire, political transition, you know, democratic uh, solution and dialogue and so on. And uh, instead of that, they are totally one-sided, the West. They're completely anti the government of Syria. They're completely in favor of the rebels, arming them, as I've already mentioned, with so-called non-lethal equipment, backing the supplies of real lethal equipment by Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. And, uh, and yet they say they support a political solution. It's nonsense. It is nonsense, and it surprises me, uh, because actually the Annan plan gave these people much of what they claim, at least, to have wanted a political transition, democratic elections, uh, the end of one-party rule, and so on, all of which I am in favour of in Syria and everywhere, myself, as indeed, of course, are you. However, people like us who oppose uh, the Al-Qaeda uh, 
insurrection in Syria, the foreign intervention in Syria, are characterized as uh, friends of the uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, regime. Um, and I, I just find that very, very difficult, not least because actually all of my political life, I was against the uh, Assad uh, regime. But I'm even more against foreign intervention in other people's countries. What's going to happen in Syria? How is this going to end? I think it's going to be far, far worse before it gets better because I think the political solution is out of the window. The West is pushing war. It's regime change by civil war. That's what they're doing. And if the worst comes to the worst, they may even use NATO intervention like in Libya after the November US presidential election. Whoever wins, I think there's a real danger of the Libyan style NATO intervention. Even in point. defiance if, of the Security it, Council? Yes, yes. Even if, uh, and it, as long as if Assad is still there by November this year, which is still obviously an open question. I mean, the tragedy is that, that there are people in Syria. In fact, there was a, a conference this week at the, the convent of San Egidio in Rome, which is a well known mediation center of various civil society groups from Syria who want political solutions, who said no to violence. They said, please, to the Free, free Syrian Army, put down their guns and negotiate. But their voice is not heard. They are branded as toadies and stooges of the regime, uh, uh, even though they are genuine, independent Democrats who see the danger of civil war. But the Syrian regime is not weak. It will fight back, and it has powerful friends. I mean, what would the attitude of Russia, for example, be to a NATO war on an allied country after the Security Council has ruled well, one out. They would be completely furious, but I don't think they would intervene against it. They would just denounce it. And, and they, would, they would rightly use it around the world to say, look, we keep saying that this is not a unipolar world anymore. It isn't just one country, the United States and its allies that control the world. There are other centers of power, and that is why we support international law, the United Nations. That's why we won't support a resolution demanding the use of force in Syria. And uh, if the NATO people are foolish enough to go down the path of military intervention, they will only blacken their name even further around the world. And sharpen the contradiction between the emerging powers especially China and Russia, and the West, portending and, and the a, a new cold war. Brazil uh, and war. India, yes. and all these other countries that, yes. that don't want any more this unilateral intervention. <clears throat>